Welcome to another market update, market talk video here for late 2023. You know, at some point, it's going to be very fun to go back and watch all these videos I do and like <laughs> see where we were at at the different time points. I've watched some of my own 2021 videos now, and it's funny where I had like some correct warnings about stuff. And then at other times, I was still kind of bullish, still kind of excited for big sales. And obviously, we now see how a lot of those have played out. So these videos are really acting as a bit of a time capsule for how the graded and sealed market market is evolving over time and I think that's awesome but today's video is going to be more of a long talk going over the heritage signature auction that just took place and my overall sentiments on the market 393 games just sold of course we have the deluxe set there 120,000 Super Mario Bros 3 for 108,000 Resident Evil for 38,000 some really strong sales in this auction and this analysis right now this is coming right off the coattails here of Carl Jobes releasing a new video the retro video game market has a Officially crashed. So if you haven't watched it yet, Carl just goes over some of the 2021 prices and how bad they have fallen compared to 2023 now. Like this Resident Evil, for instance, is literally the same exact copy that sold back in 2021 for $260,000. It just sold for $38,400. So Carl's video just goes over a lot of that stuff, which... At this point, if you are keeping up with this market, if you do keep up with sealed and graded video games, we already know that 2021's prices are long gone. You can take all of 2021's comps when crypto was all-time high, stocks were all-time high, comics, coins, whatever, right? Everything was flying high at that time. All of those prices are basically irrelevant now. And all of those comps from 2021 are going to be pretty crazy compared to what we see now. So for anyone who actually keeps up with this market, there's nothing new there. But now I guess every normal person, how many views does that have already? 242,000. Let me just refresh. Uh, 268,000. So I mean, <laughs> that's six hours. That That's probably going to get a million views, right? So a million new people now realize just how down video games are across the board, I guess. I honestly think you could argue that's a good thing. That's like a million new people who get exposed to graded video games, who get exposed to the market, who get exposed to some of the prices that exist. Call me crazy, but given how small this market and this hobby really is, probably a net positive for a video like that to exist. But this video today is actually going to be pretty darn positive compared to Carl's analysis there, because we're not looking at a two-year gap here. We're either looking at like a three to five year time frame, or even a three to nine months. A lot of stuff now in 2023, like three to six, three to nine months is pretty darn stable. Things are kind of looking good for the graded games market, in my humble opinion. So say thank you to every single patron who helps support the channel as well as the YouTube members. I can't do this without you guys. Hit the like button and let's talk about some auction results. So at the very top of the auction that just took place was a brand new deluxe set. VGA 85, 120,000 dollars. Now before the auction, I knew this was going to break over 50,000. I had very little doubt there, but it, I, you know, I was thinking maybe 60, 70,000. Something like this is the kind of item that comes up for auction and the sky is truly the limit. If VGA had pop reports, if VGA would ever publish pop reports, we would know how many of these are actually on the pop report in brand new condition. Like this is not a qualified set here. This is actual VGA brand new. So there has to be very very few of these that exist. 120,000 for this is honestly fantastic. That That's crazy. I think 120,000 is extremely good for this sale. Which brings us to what I think is basically the most surprising result for the entire auction. Mario Bros 3 Left Bros breaks $100,000. Now honestly, this kind of came out of nowhere for me. And we can actually bring up some data for this because the last time we saw a Left Bros sell at auction, it was a WADA 9.48 plus for $60,000. Of course, all the way back in 2020, we did see 9.2A plus peak out at 156,000. 9.4B went over 120,000. That was around the July peaks there. But from July to November 2022, we did see the exact same 9.4B copy. The one that sold for 120,000 sold for $26,000. So the trend line on Left Bros, even in really high grade, was on a downward trajectory. And then wham, 108 freaking thousand dollars for the pop one. CGC copy here. 9.4A plus highest CGC copy that exists. I don't know who the buyer is or where this person came from, but man, oh man. They wanted a Mario Bros. 3 Left Bros there and, uh, 
they secured it. Congrats to the buyer. Congrats to the seller. That's uh, that's a crazy one right there. Now, of course, there's 400 games here, so I can't do analysis on every single one of them. If there's something from the signature that you actually want me to talk about or do analysis for, just leave it in the comment section. I can get back to you with some data, some thoughts if I have an opinion on it. This right here is a Legend of Zelda. It was an employee store copy, though. 9.48 plus second print. It still almost went for $50,000, which I think is fantastic for a... Like, like it's not a factory sealed copy of Zelda. I think forever you're gonna have to explain that oh this is like an employee store copy so it's it has a left right bottom seal instead of a normal H seam I just it doesn't really appeal to me I honestly thought it was gonna sell for a lot less than it did so for me 50,000 on this or 48,000 really good sale John Madden championship football 9.88 plus plus went for 43,000 this again it's a game that has much 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 higher sales in the past but just like with Resident Evil here uh it, it's already expected that that the games are going to sell for less. That's why Carl's video doesn't really add anything new for people who follow the market. Coming into this auction, someone asked me what I thought the Resident Evil would sell for, and my own guess was, I think, 36600 So it sold for 38400 Like, if you follow the market at this point, there, there's a lot of trends that have already shown themselves. And even though the overall trend is down when you go, like, 2021, if you go three to six months, like, a lot throughout 2023, honestly, we're seeing a lot less volatility. Especially, especially, especially if you're participating in the like $100 to maybe even up to $5,000. Like I don't want to say there's no downside in that market if you're buying stuff like, like here's 9.8 A++ Minish Cap selling for $6,000. Or you can get yourself a pretty decent copy of Mario 64 for $5,000 now. Mario RPG is $4,500. VGA 95 Ninja 5.0 is 4500 Cheetah Men's 4500 And if you even go down further than that, because I'm not going to be able to talk about a lot of these lower price sales in the auction here, but as you go down into this range down here, I, I just... I genuinely don't see a lot of downside anymore. Pokemon 85 plus sells for $3,500. Kirby's Dreamland 3 9.0 going for $3,300. We now exist in a world with sealed and graded video games where like everyone knows about them now, right? Whether people love them or hate them, everyone knows about them. Where if you go back to 2019, 2020, when all this was just first coming out, it was first starting up, only the people who were deep into it actually had any idea about this stuff. And a lot of those prices did explode on the back of speculation from people who did know about this stuff or people entering in or whatever it is right now we see a lot of these prices where even though they're down a lot from what they were at the absolute boom phase something like harvest moon here 8.5 a plus three thousand dollars a lot of these games now have people who genuinely want to participate in this market and when there's only so many of these to go around like i'm sure harvest moon is a pop five or something right five known water sealed copies i just don't see a lot of downside at this point like maybe your three thousand dollar copy of harvest moon falls to 2400 next year maybe that implies another year's worth of downturn and even at that point say you purchase this for 3100 dollars and next november it's selling for 2500 i just don't think that's really anything to be afraid of and at some point a lot of these games in this price range are gonna start getting dangerously close to their cib price levels ocarina of time collector's edition 9.08 plus is down to two grand band Joe Tui you can get for two grand 85 plus Star Fox 9.48 plus or two grand I'm sure you're getting my point here the amount of stuff you can now get in this hobby for one to two thousand dollars is fantastic and like I said I, I don't want to say there's no downside risk to it because obviously right there's always downside risk because this stuff is inherently uh, it's, it's collectibles you guys know this I, I don't need to beat that into the ground but it just no longer feels at least to me and with comps I'm seeing and prices I'm seeing in the market that you're going to see your purchase drop in value by 50% next year. I just don't see that happening on those lower end items. However, with all that said, let me just scroll back up here to the top side of the auction, what we can call the ultra high end if you want. I still don't think a lot of this stuff is super safe and there may still be some heavy volatility in this stuff. Obviously, the prices we see, right? Resident Evil for $38,000. You can argue that it's a fantastic buying opportunity. It's a pop five. This is now, I think, four out of five copies have hit the market so it's very likely that we're not even going to see another long box resident evil in the next year so if you do want to copy you kind of just have to buy a copy but if another one does come up without the market shooting upwards or without new entrants coming in at these price levels which i guess is something i'll say like at the 
20,000, 30,000 and above, I'm not sure there's a lot of new money coming in, like a lot of new millionaires. When I talk about that one to $5,000 price range, like a lot of normal people can participate there. Like, yes, you have to have a decent amount of money, right? But you don't have to be like a multi-millionaire in order to buy a game for $2,000. But once we get up to 36,000 for Mario Kart 64, 33,000 for Mario Bros there, uh, Secret of Mana 9.88 plus goes for $33,000. Once you start getting into this, you kind of have to have a business or just just have a lot of income. But even with something of Secret of Mana here, one that I do want to signal out, because 9.88 plus just went for 33,600, which honestly, again, I would say is a pretty darn good price that it still broke above $30,000 for this. And again, we can bring in actual data for, oh my God, how bad is the market, right? Is it crashing? What's actually going on with this? 9.28 plus did sell for 45,600 back in 2021, right? So that's the peak for Secret of Mana. So two years later, of course, even though it's a 9.28, 9.88 plus that came up, we were going to see a drop in value. That's inevitable. But what's interesting is that all the way back in 2020, March 2020, 9.88 plus, same grade, sold for $10,000. So from 2021, it's down tremendously, right? But if we go back to 2020, Secret of Mana is still selling three times higher than it did. This right here is the 9.88 a plus trend line over the past three years. That's what it actually looks like for Secret of Mana 9.88 a plus. So you can certainly argue it's a fantastic buying opportunity compared to what we saw in 2021, but it's also still three times as high as what we saw in 2020. And that's not to say that it's a bad purchase right now. Again, if you want to get a copy, you have to buy a copy. I believe it's a pop 2, 9.8A+. So if you do want to play the waiting game on something like this, you, you just might not have another opportunity. But that's kind of what I mean when I say that this really high-end stuff isn't still without risk. A lot of it is still flying tremendously, tremendously high compared to where it was 2019-2020. And that is, like I said, because now everyone knows about sealed and graded video games. Love them or hate them, like the awareness is out there, which is what I said about Carl's video, right? A million people, a million people are now going to be exposed again to sealed and graded video games. I think it's almost inevitable that some people are probably going to look at the market and be like, hey, that's kind of cool. A long time grail here, stadium events, 8.0 cartridge, 19,800. Honestly, like stadium events is kind of keeping pace. It's kind of doing pretty well. And then you have Mega Man X here, 9.6A plus made in Japan, early print, $18,000. So again here, right? If we look at Japan, copies of Mega Man X, 9.6A plus just sold for $18,000. 9.2A plus sold a year ago for $9,900. So that like, you know, double the price still for the 9.6A plus, which has one copy that is in better condition as well. So this is not the top of the pop for the game. If we go back to August last year, an 85 plus sold for $18,600. An 85, of course, 2021 did sell for $30,000. Again, you just, you gotta kind of discard those 20 21 comps but that august 2022 for 18,600, like this 9.6 a plus is comparable to an 85 plus and sold for basically the same price twisted metal went for 17,400. pokemon red 85 plus sandshrew 16,800. that was more than i expected on pokemon red actually almost all of the pokemon games sold pretty darn well even sapphire here 16,200 for a 9.8 a plus plus like despite all of the headlines being like oh my god great games crash if you still want certain things if you still want certain games like you're very likely never going to get a high grade super mario kart for like five grand again that price point will very likely never happen again now that's not to say that it might not come to ten thousand or twelve thousand but even on these higher games now we're talking about oh you you might buy it now and lose five thousand dollars versus someone buying this two years ago and losing fifty thousand dollars the downside risk on just enjoying this hobby like not even <laughs> not even speculating making money just the downside risk of you wanting to participate in this hobby is just so much less now final fantasy 3 went for 15,600 x2 15,000 x2 has long been a very hard to get game as well for super nintendo legend of zelda 9.6 a plus oval right late print legend of zelda 14,400 now dare i say that's honestly almost a good price same with the adventure of link there 9.8 a plus like these are high grade legends of zelda now coming down to almost the ten thousand dollar price point obviously i believe in video games as a collectible i 
believe in collectibles long term. $30,000 to get yourself a high grade set of Zelda and Zelda 2? It's just not that bad. Mike Tyson's Punch Out 9.4A. We don't see Mike Tyson's Punch Out nearly as much now at auction, especially high grade. 14,400 there. Baseball was a matte sticker first print for 13,200. Link to the Past again, another game where you're probably just never going to get a high grade copy super cheap again. 12,600 for a 9.4A there. Mario Bros. Right Bros. Still 9.8A plus, right? Like Mario Bros. 3D. One of the most common graded games that exists. High grade copies of this stuff. You're just, it, it, you're not going to get them for cheap. There's way too much awareness in this market now for 9.8s of key games. Key games. Look at me talking like a comic investor now. For these super popular games, I just don't think we're going to see, you know, 2019 price points ever again. And Mario Tennis VGA 90 cracked $10,000. A Halo console bundle here went over $10,000. High grade copy Ocarina of Time Collector's Edition. That's a 9.6 A++ with the pre-order bag, poster, and some stuff. $9,000. Even Mario Kart 64. 9.4 A plus copy can be had now for under 10 grand. Obviously games like Mario Kart 64, Mario 64, Smash Bros 64. Maybe I just have Nintendo 64 on the brain, but a lot of those went absolutely bonkers, absolutely ballistic in pricing. So these have now cooled off substantially as well to where it's like, okay, $8,100 for one of the most popular N64 games ever. Again, there might be some downside risks there, right? Maybe Mario Kart 64 high grade will drop down to $5,000. But you no longer have to worry about an absolute bloodbath if you enter into this. And I think that's what's awesome now about a lot of this. Normal people can enter into the market at much lower price points, and even for some of the high roller type people who want to buy video games, the downside risk of 20, 30, 40, 50,000, $100,000 some people lost on single freaking purchases, that just doesn't exist anymore. Now, I don't know if we're ever going to see stuff get back up to those insane levels. Like the 2021 price points that we saw may never happen again, right? Here's Final Fantasy 7 9.8A going for 66 I'm pretty sure it was the same grade that sold for 144000 in 2021. I don't know if Final Fantasy VII will ever get up to that price point again. When I do stuff like this, when I analyze markets, I don't really look at potential upside as much as I look at potential downside. And a lot of what I'm seeing now with sale prices just doesn't look like there's a lot of potential downside. And that's what I love about this market now, just looking at it, is I don't see... I mean, objectively, there just isn't as much downside. A $6,000 purchase on Pokemon Emerald can only go down so much. People are going to love Pokemon. People are going to love Emerald. That isn't going to change in the next 3, 5, 10 years. I think at this point, the more likely scenario is that people who grew up with Pokemon Emerald are going to stay nostalgic. Some people are going to want to collect copies of Pokemon Emerald. People who want to collect those copies of Pokemon Emerald are going to become older, have more money, and be able to spend more money on Pokemon Emerald. Right now, the economy sucks. So yeah, everything's going to be at a lower price. We can't start talking about the potential of these games again until we start seeing the potential of the entire economy. Once stocks are flying high, crypto's flying high, once everything looks great again, if then video games still kind of suck, that's when it's like, okay, maybe these aren't, uh, maybe no one cares about video games, right? But as it stands, yeah, video games are down 70, 80, 90% on some of them, but so is everything. So whether or not right now you want to buy video games or you want to go buy stocks, crypto, like everything is on sale, right? There's buying opportunities in literally everything. Don't throw everything you have into video games now that they're down. Make sure you diversify, all that good stuff. But yeah, I like the results from this signature. I like what the market looks like right now. Let me know your own opinions down below. what do you think of this signature? What do you think of the market now? Late 2023. If there's any game you want me to talk about, please put it in the comment section there. Hit the like button before you go and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.